Hey guys, welcome back to the Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. In today's video, it's going to be a quick one where I'm just going to be showing you how to create an explosion which damages the player. So I'm going to be using the star content explosion, but this will actually damage the player. And I've done a video on creating an explosive barrel. You don't need that for this one, but I will see I have that. So you shoot a barrel and it'll explode. But one video which I am using in this is where I created a damaging system. So I'd recommend go watching that so you can fully use this properly. But let's get into what this is going to be. So I'll show you what this is going to look like now. So you can see on the top left there, we have our current health. If we run in here, we have an explosion that took 50 off of our health. If I move this explosion to be a little bit closer to the player, you can see it's gone all the way down to 25. If I move it even closer, this one should now kill the player. So you can see there, it's killed the player like so so you can see we're going to be making this system here like that so i'm going to delete this code and then we'll get right into it so our first step is to actually create this explosion blueprint so to do that what we're going to do is we're going to right click in our content browser here go to blueprint class and get an actor and i'm just going to call this explosion bp but if you already have an explosion actor so for example if you're using my explosive barrel you can just do that in there but this is basically where we want to spawn our explosion so if you have that set up open that up if not open this up straight away in here what i'm going to do is i'm going to add a component add a particle system this again is just being our explosion so i'm going to select the template to be explosion like so you can see that's what that looks like and i'm just going to scale this up by three on all axes just to make it a little bit bigger like so so I hit compile, you can see that's what it's going to look like. You will get the smoke there as well, it's quite a good effect. Something else we're going to do in here is we're going to create a box collision. So we're going to add component again, get a box collision like so. And we're just going to scale it up to be as big as we want. So you can see that is where the explosion is going to be, that kind of burst there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make that, let's say, that big. And then I'll do that on the Y as well. So we're getting a square, so I made it 16.75. I'll just round that up to 17 like so. And then on Y. Just make it as big as you want like that as well so this is the area in which the player is going to be in in order to be damaged by this explosion so they're going to be in this area to be damaged by it once you've done that we're going to go to the event graph like so hit compile and i'm going to delete these three events here what i'm going to do next is i'm going to right click on the particle system and add event and i'm going to add on component activated so add on component activated like so this is basically when the explosion is going to be fired off. So what we also need to do is select the particle system again, and we just want to set auto activate to be false. So when the game starts, this won't blow up straight away. It's going to blow up when we want. We'll close that, compile and save. Out of this on component activated, what we're going to do is we're going to do play sound at location with the sound being one of the default explosion sound effects we get in the start content. Again, I'm using the explosion queue. The location with the location of our particle system so we'll just get world location of our particle system like that. So you can just drag and drop it in, get world location like so. So it's going to play this sound effect where the explosion is actually happening. After this, what we want to do is we want to cast to our third person character or just your character. So for me, that's third person. But for you, this could be third, first, whatever you've named it. The object wildcard of this is going to be get player character. So get player character like so. As third person character, what we want to do is we want to get distance to under transformation there. Alt left click that and put it as third person character into other actor instead. So other actor is our cast to, the target itself. And what this is going to do is it's obviously going to get the distance between our explosion and our player. Because obviously what we want to have it is the closer you are to the explosion, the more damage it does. Out of the return value of this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a less than or equal to float plugging that into a branch by holding down B, left click to get a branch like so, and with this as the condition. In here, I'm gonna set this to be 700. You can put this as whatever value you like, and a good way of testing this is just get a print string out of here, and then basically just activate this explosion here. So basically, if we are less than this distance here, it will fire off this print string. So you can just do that to test out to get the perfect values for you. But these are values which I found when I was testing this out earlier, and they seem to be quite good. So after this branch, what we're going to do is false, we're not going to do anything because on this range, what's going to happen is if it's not this close, then it's not going to be close enough to take damage, so the player will not take any damage. Out of true, we're going to hold down B, left click to get another branch, plug that into true. The condition of this is going to be another less than or equal to, so we just duplicate that, plug that in the condition there with the top value once again being the return value of that get distance to. The bottom value of this, this time, is going to be 500. So now if we're just a little bit closer, we're going to take damage. We'll do the damage part in a minute. Out of true of this branch, we're going to hold down B, left click, to get another branch. The condition, again, being a less than or equal to, so just duplicate that over, 
hitting Control c Control v Top value is the return value of the get distance to. And the bottom value this time, I'm going to set to 400. So again, you can set these to be whatever you like. But basically, if we're not this close, so if we're further than 700 units away, no damage will be taken. If we are between 500 and 400 units away, it's going to take a certain amount of damage. And if we're between these two, it will take another amount. And then if we're less than this, it's going to take another amount off. So now we've set up the distances we want. Now let's actually set up the damage part. So again, this is something which I made in a previous tutorial on creating a damage system. So I'll open that up now in our third person character blueprint. And you can see here that this is obviously where I'm checking the health. So that's just so I can put it on screen. You see we have a health and a damage variable like so. We also have a decrease health function here, which we're going to call. So what happens is it's going to get our health minus the damage, which is where we are going to set the damage here, play a sound, and then just simply either kill the player or just remove some health. Now here, I just have the health on the screen like so. So again, I've done that in a previous video, which you can see now it's linked on screen earlier in the video probably, and also linked in the description down below. So I'm gonna close that. And then to call this function, all I'm gonna do is as third person character, and we're going to set damage. So set this damage variable that we made here. Out of false of this first branch, like I said, we don't want to do anything in there as they're not close enough. So we're gonna come out of false of this second branch here, plug in the set damage in there. I'm going to double click this to get a reroute node just to keep it nice and organized like so and we're going to use this in a minute as well. This first damage what I want to be is I want this to be 50. So it's half the player's damage, it's not too much but it hurts them quite a bit as well. So obviously it's quite a big explosion, it's going to hurt. You can set these values to be whatever you like as well. Then we're going to come out of this reroute node here and we're going to set damage once again, plugging this into the false of the third branch. Damage this time, I'm going to have a 75. So again, it's a little bit more, but it's not full damage. Then one final time out of the root node, set damage. This time, I'm going to make this 100. So set the damage to 100, just so this definitely kills the player. Again, you can set that to be your max health. Anything like that, just make sure that the player is going to die from this. Again, that doesn't have to be like that for you either. You can set this these values to be whatever you want. It's fully customizable. So these are the distances from the explosion. This is the damage from the explosion. Then to make sure that this actually applies that damage dealt, what we're going to do is again out of this root node of our third person character, we're going to call the function decrease health. And we're going to plug that into all of these set damage integer variables here. So now what it's going to do is it's going to set the damage and then actually decrease the player's health as well. So now this should work. Well, there's one final thing, sorry, we need to actually cause the explosion. But for the moment, I'm going to go through this. So when the explosion happens, it's going to play the explosion sound. Then if the player is within a certain radius or a certain distance from the explosion, it's going to set the damage to be a certain amount and then apply that damage and decrease the player's health, dependent on how close they were to the explosion. Now you see I made this box collision in here as well. This is basically just going to be if the player walks inside this, then the explosion is going to go off. Again, you can make this happen any way you like. So for example, you can use my video on shooting an explosive barrel. You can have it as a random event just blow up anything like that but for me i'm just gonna have it so when i walk into this area so i'm going to right click the box collision add event add on component begin overlap other actor will be cast to third person character again as i want this to be my character which is causing this and then out of this what i'm going to do is i'm going to drag and drop a reference to the particle system and i'm going to just simply activate so activate there and this will then cause the explosion to happen and because we're activating it the explosion is going to happen and we'll fire off this on component activated code there. And actually one final thing I'm going to do as well is after this decrease health, I'm going to simply just destroy actor like so, meaning that this is then gone and we can't reactivate it again. Obviously, if you want to reactivate it, you can do that. It doesn't matter too much. So I'm going to compile and save. And now we should be done with this. So what I'm going to do is minimize this and just place in this explosion here. So you can see we have that there. And actually one final thing we're going to do, sorry is allow this so we can move this explosion around. So in the construction script, what I'm going to do is drag and drop a reference to the particle system here. I'm going to come out of this. I'm going to set transform like so. So set relative transform, sorry. Set relative transform like so. Plugging that into the construction script there. The new transform, I'm going to right click, promote to variable, and call this explosion transform like so. And I'm going to press the I next to it to make it instance editable, meaning we can change it to be different for each blueprint. Now, if we minimize this again, we can see we have explosion transform here. 
This just means we can move the location of this explosion in here and change the scale of it as well. Well, that doesn't seem to be working. Oh, sorry, it is working, it's just invisible. So one thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna add an arrow on top of this so you can see where it is easily. So we're gonna have it selected, add component, arrow, like so, and we're just gonna make this point up so we can just see where the explosion is gonna be, like so. And now we should see this visually represented as well so we can see this a bit better. So now if we move the explosion again, so I leave it there, and you can see we can move it there. So you can see that is where the explosion is gonna be. So I'm gonna have it over there to start with, then we can move this back down a bit, maybe move the explosion up. So if we hit play to test this, we can see that if we walk into it, it's gonna blow up. Now our damage went down to 50 because of the distance we are from it. However, we didn't actually see it. So let's see why that happened. Now we couldn't see it because I kept the scale as one. So we set it back to three like so. We should see this a bit better now. So gonna leave it there. You can see we have the explosion there. And because of the distance of that, it didn't damage the player because it's too far away. So now if we move it a little bit closer, so let's say in the middle there, this should damage the player a bit now. So you see, we now have 50 health as it took 50 away from us. If we move it even closer again, this should take off 75. Oh, I wasn't inside. Well, this does appear to be kind of glitchy. So one thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get rid of this construction script part here. And actually, in fact, I'll leave it in, but I'm not gonna set the transform of the particle system. Instead, I'm gonna set the transform of the box collision. So I'm gonna move that instead and that should be a bit better and i'll rename this to box transform instead so we compile save this should maybe work a little bit better so i'm going to up that up to be 17 again like so oh, sorry that's the wrong scale so box transform 17 there we go now this should work a bit better and it shouldn't be as glitchy so you see that we have the explosion it's 100 because uh, of the distance from the player so now if we move the box collision again so the explosion is there now if we hit play it should damage the player a bit more. So now we have 50 damage being taken off. So I now know why it's not working. I've just remembered I was being oblivious to something. What I've done is here, I've got destroy actor, haven't I? That's doing that straight away. It's not giving enough time to see the explosion. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hold on D left click to get a delay, set the duration of this to be, let's say four seconds, and then it will destroy the actor. And so in the construction script, what I'm gonna do is again, put this as the explosion. So the particle system there, as it's just easier to move the explosion than the box collision. I'll reset this name to be explosion. And actually one other thing we're gonna do as well, so sorry about all these changes, but if we go back to the event graph, you can see here this get distance to, what it's doing is the target itself. So it's gonna be going from the center of this explosion blueprint, not the actual explosion itself. So I'm making lots of changes because I've actually done this differently when I was testing it out. I did it via level blueprint, but I've realized that this way will be more efficient. So I'm doing it like this for the video. However, to fix this, you might just think, oh, plug the particle system into the target there, but that has to be an actor. So what we're gonna do instead is actually we're gonna get a reference to the particle system here. We're going to get world location. Then as third person character, again, we're going to get world location as well of the capsule component like that. Then I'll actually put this one above, it makes more sense. So what we're gonna do from here is we want to get the distance between these. So to do that, we're gonna come out of the return value of the get world location for the capsule component of our player. We're going to get a vector minus a vector. The bottom value being the get world location of the particle system. So it's gonna be getting the distance between the two. Out of this, we're going to get vector length. So just vector length like so. And this return value is what's gonna be going to the top of these less than or equal to instead of the get distance to like so. So we can delete that and now those are in there. So what it's gonna do is get the distance between the player and the explosion and set that as that instead. So now for compile, save, minimize, we can test this once again. So let's see if this is working properly now. So if I move the explosion to be all the way over on the far side over here. Now if I hit play, test this, we can walk in here. We see that we didn't get damaged at all because of how far away it is. If we then move it closer to the player, so let's put it about there. If we hit play, test this, we can see that we died immediately because of how close it was. So let's actually move it away a bit more again. So let's put it in the middle like so and see what happens. We walk in, it's taken 50 damage off. So it's taken half of our health off. So now if we move it somewhere in between those, it should take 75 off instead of killing us. So let's do that again. No, that's dead. So what I might do is actually lower this value here. So maybe put this as 300 instead of 400. Again, just mess about with these values to get them perfect for you. I walk in. 25 so it's taking 75 health off and then if I move it even closer 
now it should kill us straight away so basically in the explosion and dead like so so that works perfectly so we made a few changes halfway through so sorry for that that's just because i did it differently from when i was testing it as this way is a lot more efficient as you can then get multiple instances of these in and just move the explosion between different places each time one thing i'm actually going to do as well is on this explosion transform i'm going to set the default value to be three in the scale as obviously i want it to be three times as big so compile save that and i think that'll be it for this video as we've done everything we've wanted to do so we've set up an explosion blueprint here in which it will damage the player depending on how close they are to the explosion so obviously that's right on the explosion so it kills us if we move the explosion a little bit further away it's going to take a little bit less damage so that's taking half our damage if it's a bit closer than that it's going to take 75 health off like so and then if it's even further away it shouldn't take any damage off us at all and we have the explosion visuals and sound effects and again this is completely customizable for you so you can change how it explodes the distance you have to be from it the amount of damage it does all that good stuff you can completely customize it for you so thanks so much for watching i hope you enjoyed and i hope you found it helpful and if you did make sure to like subscribe down below so thanks so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one